Well, we've got some uh, some challenges ahead of us. You know, it looks like 32 nanometers on track, but you know, you go beyond that, and I don't know, it's uh, it's a little bit iffy. So um, let's start uh, and talk about some of the you know some of the developments uh, that are taking place right now, uh, sort of push beyond uh, 32 nanometers. What's the what's the next step? Well, in your mind. The next step is basically to continue working on new materials to improve transistor performance, but also look at uh, more novel structures such as the trigate transistor and, and other things. So there are several options on the, on the books for future technology. Okay, now trigate sort of moves the transistor from the bulk up onto the surface. What's that going to do for us? That gives you higher uh, speed, low power consumption, and lower leakage. And it potentially, it clearly gives you higher density and potentially a reduced variability in, in device uh, devices. So we get a better transistor when we do that. That's correct. All right. So, okay, moving up to the surface. When you move up to the surface, uh, I assume you're not limited to silicon. You can use other kinds of materials. Well, there are other materials such as compound semiconductors, uh, quantum well structures, or a lot of options. Uh, when you get to uh, three, five, kind of three, five type materials, the aluminium, arsenide, other types of materials like that. Okay, and what are their advantages? They, they basically allow electrons to move much faster. Uh -huh. And by going to lower voltages, you can also potentially have uh, higher energy efficiency with the improved speed. Okay, but now those are, you know, those are primary. I mean, they're still CMOS devices in some That's sense. That's right. Um, so, you know. What happens when we get to the point where we just can't scale those devices, those CMOS devices, anymore? Well, we're going to keep pushing as far as we can. I don't know what that point is. I know. You guys never want to get the light we'll never CMOS. Get <laughs> That's correct. We think the CMOS will still be the workhorse for many years beyond uh, in the future. Okay. But well, there, there are options. All right. We, Tell us about it. And we're looking for some options for, for novel uh, state variables, such as Electron spin, uh, magnetic memory, molecular devices. Okay, so moving away from electronic charge now to other quantum effects. We think that actually the CMOS will put in the platform, and then we'll have like, other functions on top of that, the other things such as uh, the other state variables, and then we'll have uh, and more than and it may enable some new computing functions, more than maybe two states at some point. Maybe so moving beyond binary logic? Is that what you're talking about? That's correct. Possibly moving beyond binary logic. There are other things such as quantum computing and things like that could have multiple states. Okay. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of talk these days about carbon nanotubes and graphene. Tell us a little bit about those kinds of materials. Okay. Those materials do have extremely high um, velocity for electrons. They can support very high speeds, and so they could enable lower power operation, higher computing speed, but also they have uh, spin functions. So they could, you could actually have a combination of electron transport and spin uh, properties at the same time. I see. There's some of the types of things we're looking for. Okay. It sounds like there are a lot of options here. There are, right? there are a lot of options. How do you sort through all of those options? Well, we are working with the Nano Electronic Research Initiative, uh, which is a consortium of the National Science Foundation, uh, several federal labs, uh, Intel, and others, uh, working in four different centers that are uh, sponsored by state governments and federal to identify innovative concepts and devices. So this is really an industry academic collaboration of some, of some scale. That's correct. It, it's a very large uh, organization. Four major centers all working, coming up with innovative ideas to develop spintronics, and use of uh, at UCLA, they're working on spin-based devices. At, uh, now, is, aren't there European activities along that line as well? Yes, there are. That, that, that we're part of, too. We're, we're participating in Europe with uh, IMIC and Leti and a couple of things, as well as a center in Ireland called Crown. Crown. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it properly as Crown. All right. So there are, we are, but there's not one singular Okay. research effort in, in, our, in Europe. Well, this sounds like, uh, for a materials person, this sounds like a very exciting time. I mean, we basically were building that one transistor for many, many decades, and now it looks like there are a lot of options on the table. Justin, this is really an exciting time for materials. It's like we're, uh, if you're looking for the beyond seed moss, we're back, like back in the 1940s, trying to invent the new transistor and developing new materials to support these new 
concept. Well, when you get one of these things, come on back and we'll have you up on the stage and you can tell us all about it. We'll bring, we'll bring your university into the show. All right, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Mike Garner. Well, of course, building is fundamental to 